Oh! Nailed it. I think we gotta go get more. Maybe this? That's the only kind of heat we pack here in Canada. Let's just use the grill. This looks like I should put on my safety glasses. Hey! All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to extend the center line that I'm gonna drill the roof vent flange down into. I'm just gonna line this up by eye. Just needed to extend out from underneath the roof vent flange on either side, and then I can draw a line or pull a string across the top. It's another example of a job that I probably am spending way more time than I need to, but I'm not under the clock. This is not a manufacturing operation yet. So take the time you need, right? So I got these Wago connectors, they're expensive, but they make everything really easy. All right, am I gonna think through this or just do it? I think I'm just gonna do it. All these little knickknacks though are adding up the weights. I'm curious what the final weight's gonna be when I get this thing weighed up. Okay, so these reverse switches, very easy to wire in. I just followed some other guy on YouTube, Ricardo. Thank you, Ricardo. This pin connects to this pin and this pin. It's all clear. Let's do a little test. Fan on. That's exhaust. Fan off. Intake. Fan on. Okay, I was freaking out a little bit earlier because I tried to run the fan off the switch and the motor just cut out. Turn it off, turn the switch to intake or exhaust, then it turned back on here. But never use the switch to turn it on or off because then you're bypassing, I guess, the controller which ramps up the amperage, I'm assuming, to the motor. I'm assuming that's why it's cutting out on me. As you can see, it's working. Amazon, three quarter inch, one eighth inch thick. Maybe I'll double it up. So we'll have the overlap at the bottom. We'll wrap around. So we have one continuous wrap. Where the hinges are, there's a, a trough. So I'm just gonna go a little wider on this side. One continuous membrane. Insane in the membrane. Maybe I'll play some Beastie Boys while I'm in the desert. So I've got some leftover three quarter inch self-tapping screws, number eight, thread. Well, let's give it a shot here, see what happens. Uh-oh, that's right on my center line. Why didn't it grab? Now it doesn't want to come out. What the f Come on, man. I guess what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to use the screws that it came with. And now the screw broke. I just broke the screw. What the heck? Not only is it not in there, but it's like lifting off. Oh my God. Basically like a hair dryer. So wire in the reverse if you want the hair dryer effect. Close the door, rear hatch is closed. I'm going to bed. Keep it down out there, animals. Oh wow, is it ever pulling air. Mega breeze. I'm gonna go to the back, see how that back port is working. Yep, pulling out the back nicely. I'll show you what I've done here for the wires on the inside. At first I started just wedging, just cutting a slit with an X-Acto knife. It took a lot longer than I anticipated. So what I did is I took my soldering iron and I soldered a channel and you can see I'm working on it here. 
for these bigger wires that I've had to connect to the fan wires. Nice. And then I'm also using my hot glue gun just to dab little spots. And that seems to be working well. We're gonna go for a full send right now. Oh, there's not any turning back now. Oh, sh What happened to my little red tab? This is bad. It's on there stronger than ever. Oh, chopsticks. Oh, jeez. There we go. Ah, ha, ha, ah, ha, ha. Don't you dare defy me. What did we learn about this? Onwards, next one. Yeah, I agree. Just like hunger, not once in a while, like all the time hunger. As sports get harder, there's no time, there's no space, you know? You just have to be aggressive to a certain extent. That motor, like you say, it's a good way to put it. I almost shorted the whole circuit. I got the power on and I'm working on the circuit. I think I need to take a break. What are you doing, wire? You shouldn't be sparking. There's no reason for that. Oh, yes, there is. Lights finished. Obviously, mosquitoes, my nemesis, they can get in there. So I've just glued some screening to the inside to prevent the smallest of critters getting into my toes. Okay, today I got inside, I've entered my parents' laundry room. I'm gonna try to lay out the circuit just with some Wago connectors. For this, I've got my 12 volt battery as my power supply. I got these lights off of Amazon. They've got three wires coming out of the back. One is for black is uh, your power lead, white is ground or negative. And then the red third wire is for 100% brightness. And that's gonna give me my braking effect and my signaling all out of the same lights. And I need to start by testing the idea I have to tap into my brake sensor on the e-bike. So you can see attached to my brake lever, I've attached this sensor. Cycle Analyst <clears throat> sends the message to the hub motor to brake. And then you get your regenerative braking, which by the way is awesome. You don't even need to use your mechanical brakes. And apparently this is the opto something or other relay with a high low level trigger. I'm gonna try to wire this up and see if I can use the five volts from the e-brake. I think that's gonna be it for graphics. That's on there sturdy. The only way it's getting off if it gets ripped off by a wolf chasing me through the forest on a rail trail. I even looked up a research paper on spray patterns and what I found from that study is that from the contact patch of the tire you've got a lot of spray coming up right about 45 degrees and then you've got this other spray that sort of stays down uh, right around here and it's going to pass through and then the back draft is going to pull some of those droplets back onto the rear face of your vehicle.
Okay, I've turned the cyber drop around. Pretty nervous. The thing, I mean, it feels quite heavy now. In fact, I'm gonna go weigh each wheel. 107.4. 108 pounds on that front fork, that front wheel. You know, it should be fine. But I feel like this is right at the threshold of what's acceptable. 121 pounds on the rear wheel. So somehow this thing got up to 300 pounds in a hurry. Well, according to that math, this thing weighs 350 pounds. Uh, that's definitely a lot more than I budgeted for. <laughs> At least it won't blow over in the wind as easily. 350 pounds, holy shit. Yeah, it's gonna be up around 400 pounds, pretty close. Like the, what I don't, I don't know is the side to side force. Is that gonna just bend this whole thing? I don't think so. I just, I think it's gonna be okay. But I'm a bit worried about that. Me on the bike, point of comparison. Oh yeah. It's the same weight essentially as me on my bike. And obviously it's three wheels. So the load is distributed across three wheels. Although it's biased the weight towards the front but that's only on braking. But 180 pounds on the rear wheel. That's 180 plus 106 is uh, 286. And I'm about 230, so the bike weighs about 56 pounds with the battery, motor, and everything. So this is my wiring harness that I'm connecting to the bike. There's gonna be an XT90S right here. So I'll have it running inside the tube. It'll come out here, down the side, and then I've soldered up to the XT60 connector, which will go into the Franken Runner controller. Yeah, like that. Also, it's gonna look a little funny that it's sticking out. You're gonna think, well, why didn't you mount it like flush? Well, that's because it's important to have as much airflow around the unit as possible for cooling so it doesn't enter thermal rollback, especially when I'm on those big mountain treks. That's gonna become in very important. So that's why I'm mounting it this way, maximizing the amount of surface area interacting with the air blowing around it. 